Well, hello there everyone. My name is Amy. This is the Opinionated Woman and welcome to another South African reading vlog. I did another one of these earlier in the year. I'll link it in the doobly-doo. Um, but I have another three books that I want to read for you that are all South African and I'm super excited to get into it. These books have been sitting on my shelves for so long, just being like, read me, bitch, and I'm, I'm there. I'm reading them. The three books that I'm going to be tackling in this reading vlog are An Unusual Grief by Yawande Omotoso. Um, this is a new release. I think it came out this year. I think it came out this year. Um, this is about Mojisola. Yeah, who um, has lost her daughter. Her daughter was estranged from her um, and now her daughter has passed away and she's trying to get to know her daughter from beyond the grave, I guess. Um, and she goes from Cape Town to Joburg, where, which is where I'm from, and uh, holds up in her apartment and then, yeah, tries to follow her life and see who her child became because they were so distanced from each other. Um, I think this is gonna make me cry. I have a feeling, but we'll see. <laughs> then I have What About Mira by ZP Z P Dala. ZP Zala. <laughs> ZP Dala. Um, and this is about Mira who goes to um, she flies from Durban to Dublin to escape a toxic marriage. Um, and while she's in Dublin, she um, starts having an affair with one of the um, oh, she works at a school for autistic children and she starts to have an affair with one of the parents. Yes, and she says, it says their obsessive love affair uncovers the frightening truths about Mira's childhood back in rural Kwazulu Natal. I've never read a book set in Kwazulu Natal before, um, even though I've visited it so, so very many times. Um, so yeah, interested for this one. And then I have a non-fiction that I'm going to be alternating. That's what I like to do with non-fiction is alternated with my fiction. So that is early one Sunday morning, I decided to step out and find South Africa. That is a... a um, title that I'm never going to be able to say without looking at it. Um, I really like this cover. It's so cute. Um, but this is basically a non-fiction of a man who traveled all over South Africa and he um, just is going to like visit a bunch of different, different places, uh, meet different people, different landmarks, all of that kind of stuff. Just basically explore South Africa. Um, and I've never read, I've read books like this from like Bill Bryson about like the UK, Australia, places like that, but I've never read one about my own country. I'm especially interested in the places that I haven't actually been. Um, so yeah, there's what I'm going to be reading for this vlog. I'm going to be starting off with an unusual grief. Let's get into it. just got into an unusual grief um, I'm already loving the writing I was getting through it so quickly so we're following following, following Mojisola um, who lives in Cape Town and her daughter lived in Joburg so she's come to Joburg to see her flat now and she's already had to deal with the white woman landlord and um, she's now going through her daughter's stuff trying to find out what she was doing and how she lived her life and how it came like how her death came about and and all of those things but we haven't been told why they were estranged yet um which i really like i, I it's got a perfect amount of tension like absolutely spot on amount of tension um and yeah, I'm really intrigued, like I really want to find out. And the one thing that is so wonderful about reading South African books are, like it's so silly, but like when when my dad watches movies that are set in London, he'll go, oh, that was Barbara's school. My dad's a cockney. He's like proper, like working class Londoner, you know? So he, um, he's got an accent and a half. Um, 
he's like, oh, that was by my school. That's where you used to play football and stuff like that. Um, and that's what it's like, like reading South African books because she mentions something in Cape Town. She mentions the pick and pay on Rhonda Bosch Main. And I was like, oh my God, like I can picture exactly where she was because I've been to the pick and pay on Rhonda Bosch Main so many times. It like used to be where my, my sibling used to stay there. Uh, like round, round about there and it's so it's so cool being able to have those little bits in there and then when she goes to Joburg because I'm from Joburg like that's also really cool for me to um, to see because it's like oh yeah I also can put myself in those places and um, yeah it's just got that, that element of familiarity that like adds an element to the reading of this and I'm really really enjoying it but I am now on my way because I need shampoo because I ran out of shampoo so I need to go to a decent clicks because the clicks up the road from me not that you need to know this but the clicks up the road from me has cuck choices when it comes to shampoo so I'm going to clicks to buy some more and then there is a bargain there. I've not been to a bargain box in a long time, like a really long time. Um, and sometimes they have like Mursa sales on. So I'm thinking I'm going to go just wander past the bargain box because for this vlog, I showed you the three books that I'm reading. Um, those are three of the four books that I have left on my physical TBR. So if I can get books for a deal that I want, I'm going to do it. So yeah, let's go see what they have. successful um i hang on <laughs> i first like the reason i actually went to the shops is i needed shampoo and conditioner i ended up picking up these because they're cruelty free and they're slightly better than the ones that i've been using and it's got no sulfates or parabens and stuff oh this this feels nice and it's lavender i love lavender i found i just found out recently that um you get uh Texture seeking autistics, and I'm a texture seeking autistic for sure. I mean, I'm not texture, um, texture sensory, sensory. And I am very, very intense when it comes to like smells. I love like a good smell will change my mood. And lavender, ooh, one of my favorites. But let's get to what you actually get for and that's the book. Um, the first book that popped that I saw when I walked into there, uh, it was a hundred rand. 150 rand for three books. That's 50 rand a book. That is cheaper than some secondhand stores. And while I'm, I'd prefer to shop independent as much as possible, every now and again I do like to go in and get myself a special. So the first thing that popped up was Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I've heard so many mixed reviews about this book, but it sounds like it's going to be weird. It's set at some like university. And it's like, apparently it's really strange. And oh, it's blurred by Chloe Benjamin. I like Chloe Benjamin. And they said it's genre bending, gothic, and smart and spooky. That sounds great. Louise O'Neill as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is blurred by so many cool people. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit far away. But I've heard uh, Kayla from Books and Lala talk about this a lot. And while our tastes when it comes to thrillers do not match at all. If Kayla really likes something, I'm most likely going to hate it. Um, we do match when it comes to weird shit, so I'm hoping this one will be a, a good one. Then I saw, ta -da -da -da, it's like my actual first physical copy of Frederick Buckman. Um, this is Britt Marie was here, so this carries on from, um, or it follows one character from my grandmother sends her regards and apologies, I think that's what it's called. Um, it's a freaking mouthful of a name, yeah. Yes, there we go. Um, so this is translated from Swedish. Um, and it's about Britt Marie, who's like a really... Um, she's like kind of a negative, um, very uptight character in the previous book. 
and then you get like this um you get this tiny little bit of backstory at the end of um my grandma sends her regards and apologies that hints at a much deeper backstory for Brit marie and like a reason for why she acts the way she acts so i was like okay i need to pick this up very nice spine as well it's a very pretty book um but i'm excited to dig into that one because i love um pretty buckman's writing and then the third one so many slips why are there so many in here um the third one is happiness by amanita fauna um i've heard about this book from and this author i think mostly from jen campbell and i've never actually like seen one of her books to pick up um and it's about so two strangers collide attila a Ghanaian psychiatrist and gene an american study in urban foxes so it's about like uh this volunteer network of fox potters that she's built up mainly from west african immigrants working london's myriad street so it's like these two um like strangers and immigrants that like bump into each other and they become entangled in each other's lives and um it sounds really great and look at this cover isn't it beautiful it's gorgeous oh i'm so happy with that okay i promise you the next time i come and talk to you it will be about the south african books but i did need to do a little bit of a book haul because who doesn't like a good book haul in a vlog i was so busy getting ready i forgot to intro this before i left the house so um i am taking you guys on a little trip because i like in my last South African vlog, I went to um, Signal Hill. So I want to show off like something South African, like and obviously Cape Townia, um, in these videos when I do manage to do them. So we're taking the bus and we're going all the way to Greenpoint Park. I'm going to get creamery ice cream. We're going to sit in the park and read and we're going to look at the promenade. So come along with me. It's Sunday, so the station is completely empty. Um, I used to take the bus all the time. Um, when I worked this side and uh, no, when I lived this side and worked in town, I used to take the bus a couple of times a week, um, and it was always like really good reading time, even when I was in like a big reading depth that I had for like years. Um, but now it's just like really good reading time. Um, I think the trip is going to take about an hour, um, and then yeah. I've got two different books with me. I've got the, the non-fiction about traveling around South Africa and I've got Unusual Grief. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. This should be fun. Just pull me in a bit of beer roll. Because... So beautiful. The bus stopped at... Uh, didn't stop at the stop that I asked him to, so I'm just walking to uh, the creamery now. Um, but I was filming, yeah, some just like aesthetic videos so that I can make a TikTok later. And this kid, <laughs> this kid came and went, hello! <laughs> so hopefully I caught that and I can use it because that's very cute and funny. fucking shit that is so good this is sesame toasted sesame honey holy crap I saw it on the Instagram and I was like I'm getting it now we finally made it to the park
Okay, I'm back home. That was a good day. I had a good time. Uh, it's really cool deciding to go on the bus because it's like the whole trip is the event, not just getting to the place because like it was chilly there and I didn't want to like read for ages and like I was in there eating my ice cream and everything I like got and I just like because I'm not going there with anybody I can just do it on my own timetable and I love that freedom it's the best so now as you can probably hear I am watching football um I started reading um the early one morning I'm just going to call it call it early one morning the one that about going around South Africa and it was so cool because the first paragraph of the first chapter he spoke about hope street which is my favorite road in joburg my absolute favorite it's this little one-way road that runs parallel to louis berta and it's got um jacaranda trees like growing over it in like this big so it's like just a tunnel of trees all the way down oh it was my favorite and i always used to use that road when i came home from work when i came home from varsity so the fact that he mentioned that right away i was like ah oh, so lovely. <laughs> so I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be an interesting one. But uh, I got in some really good reading, like an hour each way, but in a good chunk of books, which felt really nice. And now I'm just going to relax. What a good Sunday. <laughs> I'm reading this and I'm enjoying it so far um it's definitely written by a white man <laughs> um so like the histories and things that he's telling is not necessarily going to be based on like um experiences of people of color uh which I would like to read a book like this from that perspective but this is what I've got right now um but he's talking about this one family um, so like the, the, there's this guy called Thomas Pringle and he was a poet and he wrote the first like poetry in English to be written in South Africa, like in the Cape, in the Eastern Cape, um, under a Vitkat tree. Um, but this, I didn't know about colonialism and I found it really interesting. I mean, it might be common knowledge to some people, but like, I didn't know about it. Um, but so Thomas ended up coming to South Africa because of the Cape immigration scheme. So it was it was literally a, a colonizing scheme that was uh, like annotated, annotated, advertised in a newspaper in the 1800s. So it would say, you know, you could own land, you could eat your own food from your own garden, be self-sufficient, have freedom, have your own land. That's like the main thing. For the people who weren't like upper class and didn't own their own land um they're also oh they're not allowed to vote as well because they weren't landowners yeah so like <clears throat> it was obviously the 1800s it was very um classist i mean as if it's not now you know but um i just didn't realize like these people were basically like oh here's this open land if you need your own like we won't accommodate for you in your own country therefore we're just gonna like you could go to this other land and there's like all this space and all this free farms and shit like that and you can go there and do your own thing that land belonged to other people like <laughs> the native people were there first um it's not just like a new um like apartment complex that's opened it's al that's that's almost like how it sounded it's like a whole complex of plots of farming like a farming land and you can just go there and pick it up and it's just so bizarre it's so bizarre like the arrogance i mean obviously but like the audacity the audacity of fucking white people just being like oh yeah this land we found just come along come on you can do what you want here fuck it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Um, 
anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to come in and say that. But I must say, I really like how this is based on walks. So each chapter, he'll be in a different place and he'll be walking from a certain place. So it'll tell you where he is, how long the walk was. Um, and then he tells you the history of it as he also describes the landscape that he is experiencing, which is really nice. Um, it's definitely a, a cool way of approaching it. Alrighty, the first book is done and dusted. Um, I think out of the two South African reading vlogs that I've done so far, I know I haven't finished the other two books yet um, because I'm about to move on to What About Mira by Zipi Dala. Um, but I think this is my favorite so far. So I did tell you about how um, Moji Sola had gone to Joburg and was immersing herself in Yinka's life. But there's this element of Yinka's lifestyle that I did not see coming at all. Like, what? And I just thought, like, can you imagine dying and your family finding out this about you? Like, it's not something shameful, but it's something um, a little bit left field that people wouldn't... Uh, wouldn't usually be uh, comfortable with in the mainstream, let's put it that way. I don't want to spoil it because it was a complete surprise for me and it became this part of Yinka's life that I was like, no way is Mojisola going to actually like integrate herself in into this part of her life and I was totally wrong. Oh my god, like how bizarre. But it ended really well. I really like the relationships and connections that she made. Um, the discussion about her marriage throughout this as well because Yinka's father is a difficult man let's put it that way um but I just thought the way that it came together and it rounded up was just absolutely wonderful and it explored grief in a way that is completely unique to anything and unusual to anything that I've experienced and it just shows that people can experience grief in different ways and um, I thought it was so well written so highly highly recommend next I will come to you when I have started what about Mira I can't pick up the book because I am here with my baby she is in her spot this is her nightly spot much purrs. Um, but I've just read the first chapter of What About Mira and it is it, it sorry my phone cut me off. Um it very like what it illustrates like it sketches out the character of Mira very quickly, like shows the position she's in, um, you know, uh, working at the school with these autistic children. Um, feeling very out of place because she's South African in an Irish town. Um, the fact that she doesn't know, that has bugger all money and she spends a lot of her money on wine um, and has a bit of an issue with it and then doesn't make the best of decisions. But it manages to, like, just in a couple of pages, like, really intrigue you, like, a hell of a lot. Um, and she was talking about this autistic boy that she's looking after um, at school and they call him the click click boy because he click oh, off again um, I can't click because kitten but um, I click as well I'm autistic and I he clicks more to like chase people away and when he's irritated but I click um, like I go um, or I click with my fingers um, but it's not a bad tick for me um, but yeah, the click click boy. I am the click click lady. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to update you on that as I had a thought. It's not having a bath. Oh, she's licking my finger. That's me. She does groom me sometimes. She's very sweet. Oh, yeah, he. Yeah. Happy Friday. I decided to come in and check back in with you in the vlog because I haven't been checking in uh, too much because I've just been trundling along with the uh, the two books that I've been reading. Um, I am reading a portion of Early One Morning uh, that is him walking from Musenberg to Science Town, which I know very well. So that was a really nice one. Um, like he even walked along a path that I used to run on when I used to live that side of the world. Um, so that's always like, 
seeing those familiar pictures, being able to picture exactly where he is in my head is like really cool. It's like so relatable. I, I really enjoy it. Um, and then what about Mira? It's so interesting because we get like a bunch of different time frames. So we got the one time frame where she's having an affair with a student's dad. Then there's a flash to later where they're at the funeral of the child and everyone seems to know what happened. And then we're brought back to Durban because all of that's happening in Ireland. Then we're brought back to Durban and we're in, in the past where she is getting, I think it was kind of an arranged marriage kind of situation. She's um, an Indian woman and uh, she is getting married to this doctor. And I think this is where the toxic relationship's gonna come in. We haven't got too much of like them together yet. Um, but yeah, it's it's getting in there. All of these books in this vlog are working for me, which is really cool. Um, it's Friday afternoon. I'm feeling very lazy today. <laughs> very lazy. I exercise. I woke up a little bit too late. I turned off my alarms in my sleep. I sleepwalk. I mean, I haven't sleepwalked badly in a long, long time, but I have a history of sleepwalking. Um, and sometimes I will turn off my alarms. I'll get out of my bed, walk to the end, because I put my phone away from me at night. And I will get up and turn my alarms off. And I set two alarms. So I, I obviously just turned off both of them this morning. Um, so I'm feeling very lazy. But I'm just to give you a little bit of a glimpse into what I'm working on. Because it's funny because <laughs> they're slightly related to South Africa. So I have this one client that I'm writing gardening content for. He's based in the UK. And I've been really, really enjoying writing that content because I love gardening I love learning about new plants like I'm learning so many new names and everything it's like and it's like putting plants that I want on my list <laughs> I need a bigger place <laughs> I need a bigger place to put the plants in um but he's also a very nice client to work with very communicative pays on time super understanding um yeah very much like uh values your personal time which I really appreciate. And he's just opened a new website, which is about wildlife. And he's like, would you be interested in writing this? And it's so funny because the first thing that I wanted to study um, when I left school was zoology. I actually studied it for six months until I realized, oh my God, I'm in the wrong degree. But I've always been very, very into animals. And um, like learning about them at school and stuff was my absolute favorite. When we got to do projects about like different creatures, oh my God, it was the best. Um, so now I'm writing for that. I'm setting up articles today, which I usually do on a Friday, and I've set up two articles about lions, and I'm gonna, no, if they all, no, two articles about, about lions and one about hyenas, which are obviously South African animals, um, or African animals, but they, they exist here, which is sick. I don't know the last time I saw a freaking hyena, but it makes me wanna go on a game drive again, because they're not called safaris in South Africa. Only tourists call them safaris. But anyway, I just wanted to come and check in um, and I'll let you know when I've got more progress on this box. Do any of you increase your plant collection by getting cuttings from, from garden beds on the side of the road? <laughs> they're not like private garden beds, they're like municipal. <laughs> I just took a tiny cutting. Um, but I wanted to come in here and update this vlog. So I've been reading What About Mira? Let me get it. <coughs> So we just got to um, we just got to the part where she's now gone to Dublin because we pr prior to that we got her I think I updated you <laughs> prior to that I think I updated you about it um, we were definitely looking more or no we were looking in the past at her um, marriage this really toxic horrible man and his family that she's had to live with because it's like one of those houses that's like intergenerational um so she was just surrounded by all these horrible people and being treated like shit and getting beaten and stuff um and then she gets away and it talks a lot about like the social standing like it her family care more about the fact that she is um like bringing shame upon them because she's getting divorced rather than being like absolutely appalled at the way that their child was treated which is really disheartening and makes me sad um 
but yeah now she's she's realized that you know south africa is not gonna or like especially like within that community is like not gonna have much for her anymore so she finds a way to get out and go to dublin but i know that bad things also happen in dublin so i am very interested to see i have about a hundred no i've got about 70 pages left so that's all we've got left to find out what happens in ireland interesting i was kind of expecting it to be more um even because the front i mean in the back immediately talks about uh, uh dublin like as a starting point so and it was, like it is also how the book starts um but it's also interesting this is the author dp dala um and she's a freelance writer which is cool that's what i do um so yeah i will check back in when i finish this An event just happened on like page two, 220 something ish of this book, and I'm so fucking disgusted. I'm so confused. This, on the back of this book, it says it's full of black humor. I don't see any humor in this book whatsoever. Like, the event that just happened is so reprehensible like it had me ticking the fuck and also i need to come in and say like with the, the fact that she works with autistic children in real life the author does not write about autistic people very well like she seems to sort of lump anybody with a physical or mental disability into the autistic category and makes them sound dangerous and deranged and yeah the way she describes them is very ableist oh that scene was fucking disgusting i've got like 25 pages left <sighs> thank god now she's describing a 16 year old in a way that a grown woman should not describe a 16 year old So going downhill. Hello, pal. Hello, boy. <laughs> he sees me sit on the floor. He's like, oh, hell yeah. But what I'm sitting on the floor for is I... Uh, I finished What About Mira last night. Sorry, my love. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, my son. How are you? Yes. Um, I finished What About Mira last night. And this book is going straight in the donate pile. Because... I woke up and remembered that I'd finished this book and I got angry all over again. You saw those clips of me last night? I, I was just appalled, absolutely appalled. So I, I think if I need to describe about this, I'm going to put spoilers here because I don't recommend this book to anyone, but I'm going to put spoilers on the screen while I talk about spoilers. Um, so at the beginning of this book, this part is not a spoiler, um, we see Mira at the funeral for this child that she used to look after. You just know that she used to work in a home for, or a home type of school for autistic children. And we know that she's had an affair with the dad and she's at the funeral. So it's already like a little bit iffy that she's at the funeral of her, um, like she's the mistress, you know, and she's at the funeral of her, um, of the affairs. <laughs> kid you know like um so that's already a little bit iffy but then we find out what happened to the kid and this is where the spoilers come in so mira is like absolutely convinced that this man loves her i think that he let the word love slip out at some point and she's convinced like okay we're in love he loves me he's gonna leave his wife for me all of that kind of thing even though we don't get too much into their affair we just get to know that their affair is not very well hidden he literally just like pitches up to her house where she lives with other staff from the school who knows who he is um but she gets this message from him that says okay you know we need to finish this it's over and he's gone away with his wife uh to Galway to sort of like mend things and they've left their child at the school for while they're there and she sees him and like I was saying the way that she describes some of the um people here are really is really ableist um 
but she's describing this one man who is mentally disabled. She says he's autistic, but like some of these things don't really fall within the autistic spectrum. But oh. I'll just take her word for it because apparently she works with autistic children. But so this man very loudly masturbates um, on a regular basis. And she's describing the fact that she can hear him. And she's looking at this child and thinking, what should I do with him? So this man who's masturbating is like 50 years old. So she takes the child, this like non-verbal child. She pushes into the room with this masturbating 50 year old man and she closes the door and she locks it. And I was so appalled at that, just that moment of putting a child in danger in a sexually charged situation. I was like, that is so fucking disgusting. Like what the fuck? And then it turns out that the man who was masturbating used the child in some way and killed him. What? What the fuck? What the fuck? Who even thinks about writing that? Who thinks about writing that? And you think, oh, we're going to get this like really. So the fact that she attends the funeral is just absolutely bizarre to me because she fucking decided that she was going to put this child in danger because she was pissed that the married man that she was fucking didn't want to run away with her. She's fucking a married man. The freaking like proviso with married men is they're not going to leave their fucking wives and you don't want them to leave their fucking wives because they're obviously bad people if they're sleeping with someone outside of their marriage. Like, what the shit? And you think like, okay, she's going to get some um, comeuppance from this. There's going to be something that happens. Nope. It cuts right after that and goes to Durban and then has spent a whole chapter talking about the situation like this this place where she's going to be renting a room but you don't know she's going to be renting a room there yet it just describes the place and the people that own it and the shop underneath it and the people that work in the shop they talk about that for like a chapter and it is not relevant at all zero relevance absolutely nothing so I'm like so you wasted that chapter and you didn't actually get into why what she did was so heinous. And then she just moves back to Durban. And she has the gall to say, woe is me, life is so hard for me. You murdered a child by putting him in a super dangerous situation. Like, yeah, life should be hard for you, you fucking cunt. Um, I don't think that's a word that a lot of people hear in booktube videos. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Um, so yeah, I hated that book a lot. Like it was, it was plotting, and I was interested to see where it was going. And then I found out where it was going, and I was like, no, thank you. Um, so I really hated it. Um, I, luckily, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> um, I've got just over a hundred pages left of this, so I'm gonna finish the be the vlog off on a bang with this one and then I'll come and tell you my final thoughts and there we have it folks I finished my second South African re uh, I say South African read it's on South African reading vlog is what I meant to say I finished this this morning we finished off with a walk from oh from Freedom Park which brought up so much memories because I completely forgot that I've been to Freedom Park before I went on like a field trip when I was studying architecture like in first year I completely forgot that was like 2011 um it, like I wish it was here it, but it's in Pretoria um so they walk from there to um the Fur Trekker Monument with a bunch of the other people that he did the other walks with which was really sweet, like everybody coming together to do the, and they did it on Freedom Day, which I thought was such a lovely way of finishing it off. Um, I love the way that he explored South Africa by walking and uh, like delves into like the history and anecdotes about the place as he walks along. And we, it, so it's not like, sorry, I always itch my nose at things and I just want to make sure that everyone knows it's not because I do dodgy things anymore. I used to, but I don't do anymore. I have just chronic allergies. <laughs> so if you see me constantly doing this, I'm very sorry. Um, 
But yeah, like it's not like an info dump of like, oh, here's the Eastern Cape. Let's learn about the Eastern Cape. It's not. He's going for a wander in the Eastern Cape. He's talking about the, the landscape and his experience and the people that he's talking to. But he's also telling you about the area itself. And it's so digestible and so well done. I'm really glad I picked this one up. So apart from the dud that was all about Mira, <laughs> I think this video was pretty successful. Um, I'm quite excited to put it out there. I think uh, also having my little bus trip that also really like added a, a little, there's something special to this vlog. It was a really fun experience for me to, to do. So if you did enjoy this, please let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. And if you have any South African books that are your favorites, please put them down below. I'm always keen to pick up more amazing South African books. And if they're gay, I'll give you a gold star. Um, righty. <laughs> if you want to support my content, you can always to give me a one-time tip in my coffee. It is linked down below. I very much appreciate it. Um, but other than that, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll check you next time.